You might say, round-off error, well, how bad could it be? Well, in fact, round-off error actually led to some deaths in 1991. One of the biggest mistakes to use in floating point is using a 32-bit floating point value to represent time. Here's the story. Back in 1991, during Operation Desert Storm, there were Scud missiles being launched, and the Patriot missile system was deployed to intercept and shoot down those incoming ballistic Scud missiles. According to the investigation report, what happened was, after about 20 hours of continuous running, the time calculation became so inaccurate due to Randolph error that the radar looked in the wrong place for the incoming missile. That means when the Patriot missile interceptor was launched, it was pointing and guided to the wrong place and missed hitting the incoming Scud. A range gate was used to look at where the target is protected to be next. And the target track is lost if the range gate is wrong, resulting in a miss. Let's switch to a picture of what happened, and then we'll come back to this slide. The incoming missile, which is the Scud missile on the arc in this picture, first is detected by a radar pulse saying, OK, there's something out there. But because these things move very fast, you need more pulses in the air than one at a time to be able to get frequent enough updates due to the limitations of speed of light. So a classic radar system of this type will actually put out multiple pulses and it will know about where the target is so it knows which pulse represents the target distance. So you look at this picture, there might be four or five pulses in the air, but it knows, okay, the incoming missile is about so far away, so this is the pulse about where it is. In order to know where it is now, it has to know where it used to be and estimate the velocity and trajectory. So this radar runs a target tracker to figure out about where the missile is going to be so it knows which pulse to pay attention to for very precise and high frequency updates. However, this system represented in time in tenths of a second. In one part of the system, it was integer tenths of a second, but then it converted to a floating point value that accumulated over time. If you keep adding tenths of a second at 100 hours, the round-off error is enough to cause a problem. In this case, after 100 hours of operation of this floating point time value being accumulated in one subsystem and an integer time value in another, the two subsystems disagreed by about a third of a second, which is almost 700 meters. The result was, after 100 hours, the range gate computation was off enough that it was tracking the wrong pulse and it thought the missile was in a different location than it really was. Thus, when the interceptor was shot, it was shooting at the wrong location. It was shooting down by the red circle when the real missile was further away. Going back to the previous slide, what was the root cause of this? Well, really, it boils down to using floating point for time. But the backstory is the Patriot missile system was never designed for intercepting ballistic missiles. Instead, it was designed for intercepting high-speed aircraft back in the Cold War with a frontier against the Soviet Union. Scud missiles travel faster than aircraft, and it was assumed that the Patriot would be relocated frequently and would never sit in one place and run for 100 hours when it was actively monitoring for incoming aircraft. The takeaway is even a very small round-off error, if you iterate across it, so time was going 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and so on, and after 100 hours, time was sufficiently far off in the floating point compared to the integer tenths of a second that a distance computation based on velocity times time came up with the wrong answer, and when they shot at the ballistic missile, they missed. The moral of this story is do not ever use 32-bit floating point to represent time. It will eventually come back to bite you.